Hey guys, I'm excited for this episode because today we have Corlin, who is a VQ expert with EcuTech and UpRev, so... Just an idea of, you know, things that might uh, come up on the series. And we have a Sammy. Sammy is a welder and detailer. And today we also have a Dodge Dart. We have a 2013 Dodge Dart GT brought to us by our buddy Brandon. And Brandon brought it to us packed with a whole bunch of parts. Check this out. We have, well, I mean, buried in here. We have an oil catch can. We also have a whole bunch of brakes, drilled and slotted. We have a coilover set up from Yellow Speed Racing. And we also have a new clutch and flywheel with a new slave cylinder and coil packs. So, uh, yeah, we've got a whole bunch. It's going on there. It's all coming up. Stay tuned. And so right now, I guess uh, we have the car on the ground. So we'll knock out, I guess, the oil catch can. We'll unpack that in a second and see how that looks. It is a kit though, so it should have everything. And uh, these are performance coil packs. So we'll get those installed too. Cool, so this is what we are working with. So uh, coil packs, the Primera, and uh, yeah, cool. So now we're going to start the car, make sure that there's no defective issues with the coil packs and everything works properly. Okay. Batteries connected, let's go for it. Okay, cool, sweet. Oh man, we have to do the clutch too. All right. Check engine light. We'll be flashing this firing. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. uh, I don't know what the check engine light's for, but it might be because the battery's not fully secured down. All right, we'll, we'll read that. And next we got the uh, oil catch can, yeah? Yeah. Sweet, yeah. This is what we're working with. So we got this, we follow in that. So the oil catch can kit is the MPX catch can. Tire shock. Yeah, for the 2.4 liter, which we got here. And the instructions say to find the PCV hose. So it's right here. Cool, all right. So Woo. pop that off and uh, assemble that thinger. All right, so. yeah, this right, cool. So we've got a whole bunch of awesome, looks like billet aluminum. Uh, we like billet. Yeah, this is, a, this, is good. this is a nice kit. MPX. Cool, all right. And got this really nice catch can. So a little bit of assembly required, not much though. And we've got some fittings and we're gonna use some Teflon tape just to make sure that these are good and sealed. because we don't want any of the oil to actually like, you know, leak everywhere. And that's gonna mount, well, we'll figure this out. It's gonna mount somewhere around here. to mount here is then you can actually have access to the valve. Yeah. I don't know why they want it there. Yeah, so we ran into an issue. The instructions say that we want to mount it right here. And uh, well, this thing is super solid. It's attached to this plastic rail that goes across the top. And we don't, I don't you know, it's, it's really not gonna work. Uh, it would have to be forced. But we do have this space right here. He's got the heat shield. So we might just get some longer, 
hosing and just toss it in there. You're saying this valve right here? <laughs> yeah. How are you gonna? <laughs> yeah, I have. A little... I can't stick my hand, little baby, all hands, the way, you know, down there at so all. You, you could do I that. You broke my nail doing that. <laughs> yeah. You, so I mean, you could mount it there if you're like Deadpool, but uh, <laughs> but otherwise, yeah. So we're going to set this up right here, and it's just it's simply going to be easier to access everything. So we're gonna get some new lines and connect everything up, and uh, yeah, I'll show you when it's done. Woo! All right, so we have the new coil packs all across here, and look at that. Got this beautiful new catch can. We have it set so that the oil can be seen right there. And then we've got a drain part right there. It's all accessible. And the original lines were too short, but they were meant to have the catch can right here. So we got our own lines and that looks super sweet. So now that we have everything with the engine done, we have a whole bunch of stuff that needs to be done with the suspension the brakes and everything. So we're going to be putting coilovers on here and one inch drop from stock is the goal. But because these coilovers are so low, uh, the plan is to have these at the max setting and that should bring this down to one inch. So we're gonna go ahead and put the car up in the air and then uh, get to the brakes and the coilovers. in the air we're gonna go ahead and pull off these calipers then we can get these new rotors on there they're looking sweet and so uh, Corlin is going to be pulling off the old rotors while I go ahead and get these coilovers set up to be tossed on there yeah yeah oh. Next day, and we've got an Alex, and he is working on, uh, well. Getting things lubed up. Yeah, because all the, all the bolts and everything are gonna have to be removed down here. We're gonna be dropping the transmission. And uh, we also have all the brake work and everything like that to go. Uh, but we had to push pause last night because we ran into an issue. We had to get these. These are, what is that? A Torx. Torx. Yeah, e-torx socket. So it's like these are the opposite of what Torx bits are. And they get to a very large size on this car. Kind of all over the place. We got these even on the calipers. So um, yeah, we went, picked those up. I've also unboxed the coilovers over here. They are they're really nice. They look nice at least. I don't know how they handle at the moment, but I was interested in the fact that they aren't, like we've got, we've got the full, you know, spring and strut set up as one. And then suddenly we are dealing with the separated rear springs. So uh, this is what we're looking at for suspension. Yep, and as you can see, it is separated. And then we got this strut right there. So we've got our work ahead of us. Transmission, brakes in it. Yeah.
Uh, just a reference. So if somebody comes to you with their Dodge Dart and says, hey, do a whole bunch of stuff, um, I don't know, probably say no. But so at this point, <laughs> uh, at this point, we have it propped underneath on the engine to keep this side up and everything is disconnected. And so you can see there is a separation where the transmission is coming off. So now we are up here disconnecting the trans mount bolts. Yeah. Once we release that, we're gonna have everything propped underneath and uh, we're gonna scoot it all out. Yes, sir. Transmission out, and uh, now we got all the goodies. I have to go on there. So we got the clutch and flywheel setup going on down here, and so we've got new stuff over there. Here, like this. Okay. Cool. What you got there? This is the brake fluid that comes out of the clutch delay valve. Oh yeah, there's a uh, well, brake fluid in there. Yeah, this right. nice little coily boy. That's oh, valve. that's what it was, okay, cool. Cause... So, the new one I would assume does not have a valve and it's just the full, basically a coiled up brake line. Okay, well, let's compare them real quick. So that is the nasty old clutch delay valve and it's seen better days. And then we've got the new one Clearly beautiful. And this one's gonna be a clutch delay valve delete kit. We also have the flywheel and a six puck clutch and pressure plate. And to top it all off, we have a new fully assembled Mopar slave cylinder. So all these are the ingredients for that. You ready? Let's do it. Okay. real clear to see which ones are new. So this is our old one. And uh, this is what it looks, it looks like when it's um, completely worn out and damaged. This part heats up super duper hot and then, uh, you know, scorch marks essentially all over the place. And this is what the new one looks like. Whoa, are you kidding me? That, that used to look like this. What? <laughs> Maybe this one just looks a lot better, but it looks amazing. And then we have the old clutch and pressure plate here, and you can just see it's a, uh, it looks like a ninja star. That's what you were saying. It looks like a ninja star, yeah. Yeah, it looks pretty cool. Um, but yeah, clearly like scorched to death. And just a heads up, this will save you like a week or like a thousand dollars or whatever, but this is one of the original bolts that was used to keep the pressure plate on and never reuse these things. These things get heaten up to a crazy temperature and it loses all of its tensile strength and then you try to put it in and it breaks. So yeah, ask, uh, ask Alex how he knows. And so with the, <laughs> we've got the old, you know, Clutch looking like crap. And then the new one, this is a six puck clutch. Strong. Yeah, this is a, ooh, that's nice. That's, that's, that's real nice. And uh, of course, you know, when it doesn't look all scorched up on the pressure plate. So, oh, another tip, if you don't have one of these, this is the clutch alignment tool and you're not gonna get 
anything lined up correctly without one of these. So make sure you have one in a kit before you ever start doing anything. But so now we're gonna go ahead, reassemble this stuff over there. Yeah. Fantastic dodge dart. This is the only thing keeping your strut assembly from falling through your strut tower. Yeah, so this is plastic. It's and plastic then, and it's two pieces literally held in with little interlocking teeth. Yeah, it's a little sandwich. It's, it's terrible. And then, so that, it's that. And then the other reason why this is absolutely horrific taking out is because the bottom part of the strut is so long. Look how long that is. We were pushing down on it and everything and it's just not gonna give you enough room. So we had to remove the whole area down here just to get this out. So, yep, courtesy of Dodge. Super, super amazing. But it's coming along and uh, we've got coilovers over there and we got the brakes and everything. It's all going on here. All right, so I had to stop by a specialty hardware store so that I could get these nuts in the correct size because the new coilovers, I'm assuming, were supposed to reuse the top hat nut, which is, a, this is an M12. And like when we actually measured everything up on here, these should work now. This is an M14. Yeah. All right. And so M14 is what we needed. And well, we have one now. Oh, we have a bunch of stuff now. So I've got these. This one's gonna lock on there. Got some washers. Might need to uh, like uh, grind these down to the right size or something like that. Maybe not, we'll see what size we're working with. Either way, I'll be putting that back together. And because I was out all that time, the transmission is in there. It's so in, in and out twice, actually. That's all I'm gonna be doing. Oh, wow, okay. <laughs> well, these guys have been working really, really hard and it totally did not catch it on this camera. So uh, right now, just to show you where they're at, let's see. Just connecting all the things that need to come off. Yeah. And there's a transmission right there. So uh, clearly that's in and uh, yeah, got a little bit of ways to go, but totally didn't catch that on film. So yeah. <laughs> Another issue that we're running into, this being meant for an M12 and this being an M14, this isn't gonna slip through the old top hat setup. So I need to actually modify this and drill that out to the right size diameter for the M14. So this is literally all these little extra things is why I recommend people spend like an extra like two or three hundred dollars on their coilovers rather than um, get, you know, whatever the, the cheaper ones are. Don't get them. So 
He's awesome, and he is holding a drilled and slotted rotor. These are actually labeled uh, for the passenger side and the driver's side. We'll work on to get, getting that off in a second, but we're gonna blast it with some brake clean, take off the uh, you know preservative on the outside, and Jace is going to be installing these over there. Already had to go out and get new uh, nuts for swapping the top hats in the front. And then, the, yeah. so we're in the rear. One of these things is not like the other. So now I've got to figure out what the threads are in this, which is not too difficult because I'm going to, I have the bolt. I'm going to figure that out. Um, and I need to go buy a nut, another nut. So this is four nuts. Lots of nuts! Wow! So, uh, Dodge brakes. Super fun. Super awesome. And, so we've got that all. Installed. Look at that. Oh man. Turns out the uh, the big brakes and everything, I thought they were going on the front. Turns out Brandon wanted them in the rear. And the reason why it's super fun is because back here we've got an emergency brake that just, uh, on the other side, it's just uh, it's, it's super fun, guys. You're going to want to do this job for sure. We've got the new rotor up here in the front. We're getting awesome with coilovers. What? We'll see how low this is. But first, we need to bleed the brakes and we need to bleed the clutch. And, uh, well, I need to put some transmission fluid back in there. So uh, we got a little bit more to go. But we're almost, uh, we're coming along. It's bad, yeah. <laughs> Alex! So, so yeah, we got it, got it done. And uh, <laughs> that video was back here. That is not supposed to leak from there. So, um, yeah, we got, it's, uh, it's leaking. <sighs> A few moments later. Bam! And with some SpongeBob magic, it's ugly again. So, uh, ugh. but um, this job is taking a little bit of time. So what we did is we went ahead and we bled the brakes real quick. So they're they're all bled, and the brake fluid reservoir is the same reservoir for the clutch fluid. And so now we're just going to lower this down, and then we're going to bleed the clutch. So now, with the clutch all bled, we can start the car up and double check that everything that we installed actually works. And if you made it this far, you like the video. So make sure to smash that like button down below. Make sure to subscribe, share with all your friends. We have so much more coming up. 
And with that said, we're gonna go ahead and start this car up and hope that the wheels will spin. Wish us luck. All right, so moment of truth. I've got the clutch all bled and uh, I plugged the battery back in so the dome lights will not turn back off. But let's see what we got. We've got, all right, so brake pedal works. And the clutch pedal works where it, you know, has pressure. That's promising. And here we go, push the start. Woo! All right, it starts. Sweet. Okay, check engine light. That check engine light, I, I read it earlier and uh, it was the angle sensor. So maybe I'll have a video on how to reset that. But we have coverage going on. Well, I mean, you guys can see it. I wanna see whether or not we, uh, whether the first gear will work. So, in first, a little bit of gas and slowly drop the clutch. All right, well, it sounds, woo, you, all right, yes. this down and then I will take some final pans of the car. by 1.75. This is M12 by 1.75. Hey, hey guys. <laughs> we got a Tyler's in it. <laughs> We've got a Tyler. Hello. T. Leo. IPL. On YouTube, make sure to subscribe. <laughs> Hello! Hello! We have new. What? What? We have Ryan! Hey! Hey! <laughs> we have a new Ryan! Everyone's like, where the heck's Ryan? I'm wondering the same thing. If you guys don't know, we have a lot going on at the shop, and therefore that's why we've got, you know, new people in here, and we've got Ryan over there, and uh, lots going on. So, uh, yeah, we're still busy and there's lots to edit and I've got all sorts of extra videos coming up. So make sure you are subscribed and stay tuned. Yeah. I can subscribe Mills Garage, what's up? Woo! <laughs>